This is an intro to the basics of an Arduino. An Arduino is an easy to use computer perfect for simple circuits. This is an intro to the basics of an Arduino. An Arduino is an easy to use computer perfect for simple circuits. There are many types of Arduino such as Arduino Lilypad, Redboard, Mega, Blender, and many more. They all serve different purposes, but in this class we use the Arduino Uno. There are many types of Arduino, such as Arduino Lilypad, Redboard, Mega, Blender, and many more. They all serve different purposes, but in this class we use the Arduino Uno. In order to power it, we have to connect it to a laptop using a USB cable from the side of the MacBook keyboard to the Arduino. The Mac gives the board power and it also gives is also what gives instructions in the form of code. In order to power it, we have to connect it to a laptop using a USB cable from the side of the MacBook keyboard to the Arduino. The Mac gives the board power and it also gives is also what gives instructions in the form of code. To code, we go to the Arduino program. The one that's selected there, the blue circle with a little infinity sign in it. And there are three parts to code, the pre-setup, the setup, and the loop. To code, we go to the Arduino program. The one that's selected there, the blue circle with a little infinity sign in it. And there are three parts to code, the pre-setup, the setup, and the loop. This is what happens when you open the Arduino iPad. The pre-setup is used to name a routine coding language called coding syntax and it tells the program what to do, where and what everything is. The setup is tells the program what to do with things in the circuit and the loop says what you want to have done to it and when. So certain words have certain colors because these words are used to direct the system. For this demo we use pre-made codes found here. And we'll, so we'll go to digital actually and hit button to get the code for a button. When you want to have a button for it to turn LED. So you see in the pre setup, it tells where and what everything is. And then the setup, it says what you want done to it. And then the loop, as I said, has when to do what you want done to it. You see, so, and the different colored words in the output input I love. So to upload the board, we press it air, and it's loading, and it's loading. There's some problems. So it's not uploading right. So what should we do about that? Well, we're gonna make sure it's connect to the board. Right? Wait a little bit, just make sure. Yeah, so it's not responding. So as you can see, it's not uploading, so we did something wrong, so we're going to figure out what we did wrong. Well, what normally happens is we didn't put it into the right board. So we're going to go to Tools, look at Board, that's the right board. Now we're going to go to Port, and that's the wrong port. We want the USB mode port. So we're going to click on that, press Upload again, and it worked. Okay, good. So now we're going to see what happens if you wrote the code wrong. So we're going to take away a semicolon here. So we took away a semicolon, and we're going to take away the letter I from the consumer. So now you see it turned black, which means it's not being read by the system. So we've made two mistakes, but let's say we didn't know that. So we're going to upload it, and an orange box appears, and it says that NT is not a type. So we're going to put the I back in, because that's what it should be. And it says we're missing a semicolon before that. So we're going to put a semicolon in. And we put the semicolon and we'll upload it and it worked. There we go. So we use the orange box to fix whatever we did wrong. The little silver box is what the USB goes into the Arduino to power. The little silver box is what the USB goes into the Arduino to power. The 5 volt pin is where the arrow is pointing. It's a little square the next to it says 5V and that constantly outputs 5 volts to the circuit. The 5 volt pin is where the arrow is pointing. It's a little square the next to it says 5V, and that constantly outputs 5 volts to the circuit. These are the ground pins. They have white boxes with the letters G and D in them. The circuit must be completed by going through the ground, or else it won't work. These are the ground pins. They have white boxes with the letters G and D in them. The circuit must be completed by going through the ground, or else it won't work. A circuit cannot be made on an Arduino, so you must wire the circuit on a breadboard and connect the breadboard to the Arduino with wires. 
A circuit cannot be made on an Arduino, so you must wire the circuit on a breadboard and connect the breadboard to the Arduino with wires. The circuit is built in the area with all the open holes, because there's so many things you can put in there. The circuit is built in the area with all the open holes, because there's so many things you can put in there. The 5V pin on the Arduino can, should connect to the red plus line to power that whole strip which will power the board once you connect wires to it. The 5V pin on the Arduino can, should connect to the red plus line to power that whole strip, which will power the board once you connect wires to it. The white box with the letters GND in it should be connected through wires to the blue negative side, and all circuit should end with the wire going there. The white box with the letters GND in it should be connected through wires to the blue negative side, and all circuit should end with the wire going there. This is a basic circuit connecting the 5 volts to the red plus, the ground to the minus, and then wires connecting the plus and the minus to where they should go to power the light. This is a basic circuit connecting the 5 volts to the red plus, the ground to the minus, and then wires connecting the plus and the minus to where they should go to power the light. These are the digital output pins. There's 13 of them, and they either output 5 volts or 0 volts, depending on what you want to do with those things. If you've got a button that's pushed, you could say that you want them to be low, which means no volts are shot out. If you want it to be high, that means 5 volts are being shot out. These are the digital output pins. There's 13 of them, and they either output 5 volts or 0 volts, depending on what you want to do with those things. If you've got a button that's pushed, you could say that you want them to be low, which means no volts are being shot out. If you want it to be high, that means 5 volts are being shot out. This is a digital circuit. The button is either pressed or not pressed, either meaning 5 volts are being shot through or 0 volts. And this is the code for it. You see everything is named and it's a pre-written code. These set of 6 pins are called the analog pins. They give a range of values from 0 to 5 volts, meaning that you can make your light dimmer or brighter. These set of 6 pins are called the analog pins. They give a range of values from 0 to 5 volts meaning that you can make your light dimmer or brighter. This is an example of an analog code. The pin is named to the analog pin, and it gives a value that's in between two numbers. This is an example of an analog code. The pin is named to the analog pin, and it gives a value that's in between two numbers. This is an analog circuit. You see as I turn the potentiometer, the light gets brighter. And then as I turn it back, it gets dimmer, and then it turns off. So it can be any value in between 0 and 5 volts. Possible problems are that you wired a circuit wrong, therefore it can't work because it's not right, or your pins don't correspond to the na ones named in the code, or it's not cooked up right, or the code's not written right, but yeah, just check for that. So that's how you use an Arduino.